Today we're going to talk about brushes. Hi guys, Jonathan from Pure Raven Studios. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe. We have new videos every week and you don't want to miss out. Today what we're going to do is continue our series about the basics of miniature painting. Today we're going to go over your probably most important tool when it comes to miniature painting, your brush. I'm going to go through basic concepts of brush, a little bit about brush care, and what to look for when you're buying it. So there's a lot of different brush you're going to use. What I'm going to go over mainly today is the workhorse, the brush you're going to spend the most time with. As we get started, we're going to go over the parts of it, which are pretty simple. You have the handle. You have the ferrule, which is the metal part that attaches the handle to the bristles, which is the part we actually paint with. So what to look for as you're buying a brush. I'm going to approach this coming from the world of going to an art store or a hobby store and that sort of thing. A little bit later on, I'll talk about miniatures. But so when you're talking about art brushes, let's talk about the handle first. The handle is pretty much the most basic part. It's the part you hold. Brushes like this in the world of art painting are considered small handle brushes, short handle brushes. Something like this, and they go even longer, is considered a long handle brush. It's really personal preference, but for miniatures, the short handle brushes work way better. And then when it comes to the handle itself, most brushes kind of have that skinnier handle, but you can find ones like this, which you can see next to the other brush. It has a much thicker handle. I actually find this brush a little bit more comfortable to hold in my hand because of the thicker handle. You also make grips and that sort of thing depending on the size of your hand just to make it comfortable. So when it comes to the handle it's pretty much whatever you find comfortable to hold. Next up we have the ferrule which sometimes it's plastic most of the time it's metal. It's pretty much just holding the bristles onto the handle and there's not really much you're going to look for in that but I will tell you one thing. If you get nothing else out of this video learn this one thing. Never, ever, ever, ever let paint get into the ferrule. It will ruin a brush. There are things you can do to clean it up and make it a little bit better, but it's never going to be the same again if you get paint inside that part of the brush. So whenever you're painting, be very careful about when you dip the brush in the paint that the paint does not get up into this metal part right here. It will cause, once the paint dries in there, it will cause the end of it to flare out from the paint drying and there are ways to clean out a little bit but it's never going to be the same again after that so never let paint get in that part of the brush now we know the handle and the ferrule we need to talk about the bristles so there's two main parts of the bristles and let's zoom in for a second so we get a better view of this okay so let's look at the tip of the brush closely we have the tip of the bristles, the belly, and then the part where it attaches into the ferrule. So the tip is where we're going to apply the paint from, so we want a nice fine tip. The belly is what's going to hold the paint. And this is where the size of the brush you're going to use come in. So the main type of brush we use when we paint is going to be a round brush. I prefer a size 2, so you can see this is a size 2, it says it right there. Um, some people prefer size 1. Depending on the brand you're using, size 1 and size 2 could be very different. They could be very similar. Again, it depends on the brand of the brush you're using. For example, this is a size 2 and you can see it's not about the same as that size 2. This is a size 1. You can see it's a little bit smaller, but the size is still very similar. This is a size 2, but you can see it's much larger than the other size 2. So depending on the brand you're using, you have, it varies size 1, size 2, but generally speaking, I prefer something in the realm of a size 2. Some people prefer size 1, they feel it has more control, but I like the extra paint that a size 2 is going to hold. So when looking for brushes, uh, I would suggest a size 1 or size 2 round brush, and what you're looking for is watercolor brushes if you're in a art or hobby type store. The reason is there's some brush, so brushes will tell you they're for oils, acrylics, watercolors, multimedia. 
watercolor brushes tend to be able to hold a lot more paint in the body than other types of brushes and for what we're doing in a miniature you want the brush to be able to hold a lot of paint. So you may have noticed if you watch my videos as I paint, I quite often go like this on my hand before I put the paint on the miniature. There's two reasons I do it. One is to test the consistency of the paint. The other is if you roll the brush as you're dragging it across, you bring it to a nice point. So I normally do that on my hand before I start painting. If you have a smaller brush, so if you have like a size one, size zero or something smaller, it might not be holding a lot of paint. And so as I go like this, I might have gotten most of the paint off the brush and now I really don't have anything to paint the miniature with. So you want to make sure you have something that's going to hold a decent amount of paint. Again, it, there's the other side of it too. If I go, start going up in size, the brush might have too much paint on it and that could cause problems as well. So there's that happy medium there. But the key to it is having a nice point. So it doesn't really matter the size of the brush. All sizes should have around the same tip on them if they're decent brushes. So as long as you have a decent brush, size one, size two, size zero, they should all have around the same size tip. The difference is going to be the belly. And again, that's going to be personal preference partially, but you want to have a decent amount of paint in that belly as you paint. But now we need to talk about what type of fur the bristles are made out of. Some are the synthetic, some are natural. So these two brushes are both Linsky Sable. The Windsor Newton Series 7, you've probably heard of. It's kind of the gold standard of brushes. Um, this is another brush. If you can read here, it says Kalinsky Sable. That is kind of the gold standard of brush. You also have synthetic brushes. So this is a synthetic brush. Um, doesn't say it on it, but I know from who bought it. And as they look like. This is also a synthetic brush, and if I can get it in focus, it says right here synthetic Kalinsky. It's a synthetic Kalinsky sable brush. This is another decent brush. The synthetic brushes are going to be cheaper than the Kalinsky sable, and if you're just starting out, I would recommend buying synthetic brushes. The reason is brush care takes time to learn how to do properly, and you don't want to buy a really expensive brush and destroy it because you're not familiar with how to properly care for a brush. I'm going to go over a little bit of brush care in a second, but if we buy them, we don't want to buy the cheapest brush because the cheapest brush, we don't want to have to work against our tool. Cheap brushes are not going to hold a fine point and they're just, they're not going to be good to work with and you're going to get frustrated because of the brush itself. But we also don't want to start spending like $20, $30 on a brush that we're going to destroy in a short amount of time. So once you learn how to care for your brushes, go for the expensive ones. But starting out, I'll go for more synthetic. Um, I'm going to give two suggestions for synthetic brushes. This is actually one of my favorite brushes I paint with. It's a Princeton Mini Detailer. Again, it's size two round. It's my favorite. But this is a nice synthetic brush that uh, works very well. It holds its point very well. I also prefer the bigger handle. It's a little bit easier to hold. So this is something I would recommend as a starter brush. Another thing I would recommend is a Bombwick Det Cord. So, again, this is a synthetic Polinsky Sable. It's a very nice brush as well. So the I really like the Bombwick uh, brushes. So the Det Cord is the uh, synthetic, and then they also have the Igniters, which are the actual Polinsky Sable. And if you're looking to get a natural fur brush, this is one of my recommendations. And then again, you always can't go wrong with the Winter Newton Series 7. They're kind of the gold standard of brushes. So, if you're looking for something in an art store to buy, so for synthetic, I would go to the Princeton Mini Detailer. For natural, I'd go something like the Winter Newton Series 7. These brushes are actually branded for miniature painting, the Monument Bombwick series. I have tried a lot of miniature brushes, like Games Workshop makes them, a bunch of other companies makes them. Um, most of the time they're junk. I don't like them at all. They don't tend to hold a point. They're not very well constructed. And I just, I prefer the art brand brushes. These are the exception. These are very nice brushes. So they aren't sponsoring me or anything, but I just, I like them a lot. So the Monument Bombwick series, I'm going to leave a link below so you can check them out. But again, the deck cord is the synthetic brushes and the igniters are the actual natural fur brushes. But I would highly recommend trying these out. They work very well. They have some sets out. And they're just very, very nice brushes. So you can't go wrong with these. 
So those are kind of the main workhorse brushes. Other brushes I would recommend trying out for different purposes. One is a filbert brush. So a filbert brush has a rounded tip like this. It's very good for blending out larger areas. So if you're looking for something to blend out larger areas, filbert brush is really well. These also work well for dry brushing, but for dry brushing, what I actually prefer is makeup brushes. So they come in different tips. This one's a chisel tip, but they have very, very soft bristles and it makes your dry brushing much, much smoother. That's the thing you should look for in a dry brushing brush, very soft bristles. So you can see this one, the bristles are very soft. I get a brush like this brush is another chisel brush. You can see how the bristles are a lot stiffer on this brush. This one, they're nice and smooth and soft. So that's what you're looking for for dry brushing. But again, makeup brushes, they're cheap and they work really well for dry brushing. And also when you're dry brushing, don't be afraid to get a huge brush. The one other thing I would recommend when you start out is to buy a giant box of cheap brushes. You can get them at Amazon. This is what this is from. So um, I'm gonna leave again, leave a link below, but it's always good to have cheap brushes. Because remember how I said earlier, we never want to get paint in the ferrule. The time that that's most likely to happen is when you're taking the paint out of the pot and putting it on the palette or maybe mixing paints together. That's when that's going to happen most often. So you want a brush that's not your nice brush you paint with to transfer the paint onto your palette. And cheap brushes like this are perfect for that. I use this to transfer to my palette. I use it to put paint in my airbrush, that sort of thing. So. I just have a giant box of these I bought, probably over 20 brushes in it. They're cheap, they're not very good for actual painting, like you could use this for dry brushing, but for actual painting they're not the greatest thing in the world, but to have just cheap throwaway brushes that you don't care if they get destroyed, it's very nice to buy a big box of cheap brushes. And speaking of brushes getting destroyed, no matter how nice a brush you buy, no matter how well you take care of it, eventually your brushes are going to wear out. It's just, they are tools that we use but they are disposable now when you buy a nice brush you want it to last a long time but it's never going to last forever i want to go over a couple ways of taking care of them so this is master's brush cleaner and preserver it's a soap it is a very easy way just to give your brushes a little bit extra care every time you use them so i open it up it's just i know the white balance is a little off now but it's just a bar of soap here and what I do is, whenever I paint, I have a bottle. It's just a bottle full of water. So I'm going to drop a little bit of water in there. This is after I've cleaned my brush when I'm done painting. I put a little bit of water on top of the soap. And I'm going to start putting the brush through here. And as you can see, as I start putting the brush, you can see how it's starting to foam up a little bit. That's what you want. You want to see that foam action. Once you have the foam on the brush, nice and clean, Again, I always use my hand. I just drag it across and I twist it as I'm dragging it across because it's making that nice tip, nice point. And then I'll let that dry. And it's just a way to keep the brush in very good shape. Now, speaking of twisting the brush, we can get a close up of the tip of this brush. And you see how there's a little bit of a hook in it? So it hooks this way a little bit. I'll try to bring it up close to the camera so you can see that. Get it in focus. There's a little bit of a hook. I put it in front of that white line. You can see how it hooks to the one side. That is from always painting in the same direction. So if I'm constantly going this way with the brush, after time, especially with a synthetic brush, the bristles are going to start to bend in that direction because they're always being pushed in that direction. The way you avoid that from happening is as you paint, Instead of holding the brush here, as I hold the brush, I just can twist a little bit as I paint. Maybe I twist a little bit, twist a little bit, twist a little bit. So it's not always pushing those bristles in the same direction, causing that bend. So that's just a way to take care of your brushes. It's normally more of a problem with synthetic brushes than natural fur, but it can happen in both. But that's just a way to make sure you don't get that hook in the end of your brush that you can often get. It's always going to happen eventually because no matter how well you train yourself, you just you get in the intense part of painting and you're going the same direction, same direction. But you kind of want to try to train yourself to 
twist as you're painting so you're not always going the same direction with it. So the last thing I want to go over before we end out here is just a little bit more about cleaning your brushes. So the brush soap is really important to keep your brushes clean, but another thing you can do, say like you have a brush that you made a mistake and now the paint is dried in the brush, you can get something like this, which is a brush cleaner and restorer, and just, um, it's more difficult, definitely more difficult with acrylic paints, but if you let the brush soak in here for a little while, you'll be able to, it'll kind of reactivate that paint and make it gunky and let you kind of get it out of the brush. Again, it's not perfect. You're never going to get, once a brush is totally gunked over, you're never going to get it back to the way it originally was, but you can get it pretty close. and. If you bought a cheap brush and it gets gunked up, throw it out. Just give me a one. But if you have an expensive brush and you want to try to save it, this is a good way. Something like this is a good way to try to save it. The other thing to talk about is different media. So, you know, I use, love my oil paints and I use them a lot. As I talked about in that video, if you're using oil paints a lot, get a separate set of brushes for oil painting. If you clean them very well, it's okay to paint with oil, then acrylic with them and back and forth. But if you're not clean perfectly, you're going to have problems. So it's just safer. Just two sets of brushes if you're using acrylics in that way. Um, what I do a lot is I will mark my oil brushes. I'll just put like a piece of electrical tape or something around the top so I know these are the brushes that are oil paints and then my other brushes I know are for acrylic. The thing about oil painting too when you're talking about size earlier how I said size 2 is my preferable size when it comes to painting. It's different for oils. Because I thin my oils down a lot and I use them a lot as washes, so I want a lot of control over them. So I actually don't want much paint in the brush at all when I'm painting with oils. And since they dry a lot slower, it's not a big deal of having less drying out in the bristles. So with oil paints, I actually prefer like a size zero brush. Eight size zero brushes when it comes to acrylics, but they're my favorite when I paint. So I like that smaller brush. Again, it's personal preference, but that's what I prefer. And I find works best for me. So just to recap before we end, my recommendations for brushes. If you're going to a art store, if you're looking for a synthetic, Princeton Mini Detailer. If you're looking for a actual stable brush, I would go with the Winsor Newton Series 7. You can't go wrong with them. They're expensive, but they're worth it. And if you're looking for something more from the world of miniature painting, I would go with the Bombwick series by Monument. They have the Igniter, which is the Kalinsky table, and the Deck Cord, which is the synthetic. So they have both options as well. And another little note, any nice brush is gonna come with this little plastic protector around the top. Save it, because as you store your brushes, put it on the brush as you store it. It will help keep it much nicer and safe. And as I said, my preferred size is a size two round. You might prefer a size one or a different size. It's up to personal preference, but I find a size two works best. So I hope you found all that useful. If you have any other questions about brushes, I've been painting miniatures for over 25 years. So if you have a question about a brush, I probably have tried it and I probably can answer it. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. And I'm looking to continue this series. If you have anything you would like me to talk about in the series in the future, any questions about something that's basics of miniature painting, let me know and I'll make a video about it. I think my next video in this series is actually gonna be about palettes. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about wet palettes and other types of palettes and why we use one versus the other. If you're interested in that and more videos, please click here to subscribe. And over here, I'm gonna have a playlist of all my painting basics videos. I've only done one so far, but as we make more of this playlist, we'll be updated. So until next time, keep on gaming and paint the minis.